Okay. Say hi, guys. Hi. All right, they're hi, here. Hi, citizens. Oh, oh, citizens are here. Hello, citizens of Alto Reform Church. Yeah, hello, citizens of Alto Reform Church. Are you guys going to do the Wednesday night teaching tonight? Sure. What do you want to teach about? Uh, Commands of Jesus. Oh, yeah? Is that what? There's a safe here. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, guys, let Daddy get started here. I uh, figured yeah. we'd give you guys some real life. Bye -bye, citizens. Oh, we're going to have to focus the camera. Okay. That should be good. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> figured we'd um, give you guys a little bit of real life behind the scenes work here from the beginning. Yeah. Um, anyway, welcome to our week four, Commands of Jesus Teaching. So this week, we are going to be going through numbers 15 to 21. So seven a week, we have the numbers up there ready to go. Um, just like last week, uh, the commands that we're going to be going through this week are from the book of Matthew, uh, the same section, which is called the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, if you really want to dig deep into a rich section of Jesus' teaching, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. That's the Sermon on the Mount. And so that's when Jesus, last week I accidentally said the Book of Galilee. But anyways, Jesus was in Galilee in the Book of Matthew teaching um, his disciples. And um, so here's three full chapters that are just, you know, we call them the red letters. They're, they're rich, chock full of Jesus' teaching. Um, tonight we're going to be in chapters 6 and 7, kind of the starting at the end of chapter 6, and then going in chapter 7. Um, again, we do have notes. If you click on the title here of this, of the, uh, yeah, of the teaching, you should be able to access um, the notes that we have. Well, that's not them, um, actually. So here would be the notes. Yeah. Anyway. So hopefully that'll help you guys. You can follow along. You can dig into the scriptures yourself. Uh, I always say, you know, don't take my word for it. Um, I want you guys to dig into the scriptures yourselves. Um, so if you um, missed last week or any of the weeks, you can go to our Facebook page. And over on the left-hand side of the Facebook page, there's a tab uh, that says videos and uh, they're very plainly labeled when you go in there because it also has quite a few videos in there especially these days um, but it, it'll say um, week one commands of jesus week two commands of jesus week three commands of jesus uh, so they're pretty easy to find that way um, well let me um, jump in here and and pray and then we'll go ahead and jump in okay Jesus, thank you so much for the body of Christ. Thank you for Alto Reformed Church. Thank you for um, your word and how you continue to uh, give us life and give us um, hope and give us guidance through your word. And so, Lord, I pray that this time of teaching would reach the ears that you have uh, and the hearts that you have for this word and, and for the um, for the eyes who are going to be watching this teaching. But Lord, more than hearing and seeing, I pray that this teaching for all of us, including myself, would lead to doing. Lord, I pray that we would put our faith into action. And in the midst of that, Lord, I pray we would trust in your grace, Lord, because we fall short so often. Lord, we need your, your rest. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I start off each week um, with a review of why we're doing this in the first place. And on the top of your notes, it'll be there each week, um, there's the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19, and the first part of verse 20. It says, Therefore, and go to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Okay, so... All right, just making sure I thought my mic fell or something like that. Anyway, um, so Jesus teaches us that to make disciples, we have to teach others to obey the things he commanded. And so kind of as the old saying goes, um, you, you can't give it away if you don't have it. 
And so basically, in order to make disciples, you have to be a disciple. And so for us to be disciples, we have to know what Jesus commands, and we have to obey what Jesus commands, and we have to um, then teach others what Jesus commands and walk alongside them as they learn to obey the things that he's commanded that he has commanded, that he commands. Um, <clears throat> and this has been the process of discipleship all the way from Jesus through his disciples to us today. And that's how it got to us. That's how we're disciples. Um, one more reason that I ran across this week also um, to show another reason to obey his commands is to show Jesus we love him. And I put this scripture um, well, no, I didn't put it on the notes, sorry. Um, it's John 14, 15. It says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And so that's why we're doing this. We're, we're doing this um, series because we want to know Jesus' commandments um, because we want to keep them because he died for us. And we want to show him that we love him because he first loved us. All right, so let's jump into the first commandment tonight. Um, this is, uh, here we go. Um, commandment number 15 is seek first the kingdom of God. All right, seek first the kingdom. All right, Matthew 6.33 but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. All right, so this verse to me has a very special meaning. Um, a couple Sundays ago, our youth pastor Jessa was talking about how the word of God is, is living and active. And for me, uh, when I was, I think, 15 or 16, um, I... Uh, was going through a really rough time and I went to my brother's house and he just started reading scripture. And this is the only one I remember that day, but this is the day in my life, this is my follow me story. Um, when, when my brother read this scripture to me, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. What I heard the spirit of God saying to me is, hey, if you seek me, I'll take care of everything else. And so... You know, I've had lots of learning and stumbles and things like that, but that was the day that I felt like the veil was lifted, that God was um, beginning a change in my heart. His word says, he who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. And so, you know, I'm, I'm much further along in the process now than I was then, still in process, um, but for me... Um, this has a lot of meaning. Uh, but in the context of what Jesus is saying here, to seek first the kingdom of God, um, let's look at the, at the two prior scriptures, Matthew 6.31 and 6.32. And Jesus says, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So ultimately, Jesus is saying, don't seek after things to fulfill, but seek after the kingdom of God, and he'll provide all you need for the work of the kingdom of God. Um, from materials all the way to providing eternal life for us. Seek his kingdom, and he'll provide all of these things. Um, number 16 in our commands of Jesus is judge not. Okay, so Matthew 7, 1 through 5, Jesus says this, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So this is a term that's thrown around a lot today. 
Um, even my kids, when they were uh, really young, I would tell them not to do something because uh, they were doing something wrong, and they'd say, don't judge, and that, it just drove me crazy. And so it kind of does. I mean, that term, whenever people throw it around, it, it kind of kind of drives me crazy a little bit, um, more because it's a buzzword. Um, but the point isn't that we shouldn't ever um, make judgments or, or judge others, but the point is that we should be focusing more on working on ourselves and our own issues before we go around trying to fix everybody else. Okay, so we know that we can make judgments because Jesus says in John 7, 24, he says, stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. All right, so Jesus wouldn't tell us in one place not to judge and then in another place tell us to judge, uh, but to judge correctly. Um, Paul also says in, to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 5.12, he says, For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? So again, it's not that we don't judge, but that we should judge correctly. You know, first we should take a look at ourselves. Um, then um, if there's a member of a body of Christ who's caught in some sin, then we should try to gently and humbly help that person back onto the path before we ultimately cast judgment on what they're doing. Um, and we know this because of Paul's example in 1 Corinthians 5.3. He says, For my part, even though I am not physically present, I am with you in spirit as one who is present with you in this way. I have already passed judgment in the name of the Lord, of our Lord Jesus, on the one who has been doing this. Okay, so the, whole, the point of all of this isn't that we shouldn't judge, but the point is, is that when we judge, it should be um, more with a focus um, on ourselves. And then second, um, it should be done in a spirit of love to protect the body of Christ and only within the body of Christ. Okay, number 17 here. Do not throw your pearls before swine. All right, Matthew 7, 6. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. So whenever I come across uh, tricky scriptures like this a little bit, I, I like to go to um, my handy dandy gotquestions.org. And here's what they had to say about this scripture. They said, Christ had just finished instructing the crowd on judgment, which we just read, do not judge. Um, and then in verse 6, Christ tempers these admonition and shows us the difference between judgment and discernment. We're not to be hypocritical judges, yet we must be able to discern the swine lest we cast our pearls before them. So later on, Jesus um, tells his disciples that whenever they are going to preach the gospel, that if they run into people who reject their message, literally to shake their dust off their feet, off their sandals, as a sign that they are wiping themselves clean of those who have rejected them. And so <clears throat> Jesus isn't telling them um, not to present the pearls before swine or not to present the gospel, which obviously is the, the great pearl, the pearl of great price in the um, parable that Jesus teaches. But he's saying that when we do present the pearls to swine and we discern that they've rejected it, that we should move on um, rather than trying in our own fleshly efforts to make something happen when the Spirit's not working. I, you know, a lot of times in our own fleshly efforts, um, we take it personally, and we feel like that the rejection is something personal, and so we want to 
uh, try in the flesh to make something happen when the Spirit's not working. And God wants us to move on and join Him where He is working, rather than, again, asking Him, as we teach often here in this church, rather than asking Him to join us in what we're doing. Um, okay, command number 18 is ask, seek, knock. Okay. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. So this doesn't um, mean that we just get whatever we ask for. Um, but it's more talking about continually pursuing God, um, praying, and spending time with Him. James 4.3 tells us that um, we don't receive because we ask with wrong motives. Uh, literally what it says is you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. All right, so... The point is, is that the more time we spend with God, the more time that we know the heart of God, the more that God is going to give us um, as our desires, His desires, and the things that we are asked for um, are going to be according to His will. And so that's really the point of um, ask, seek, knock, is to pursue Him and to gain um, a greater heart and understanding of God. All right? Number 19, here's a classic here for us. Do unto others. Okay. Matthew 7, 12 says, So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. So, who knew, this kind of blew my mind, um, that the golden rule that they taught me in a public school was actually scripture. I think it was first or second grade I remember learning the golden rule. Uh, maybe they taught it in kindergarten too. But I remember it being like above the chalkboard. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Literally, even King James Version language. <laughs> and so, um, you know, the whole, I love what it says there, the whole law and the prophets is summed up, summed up in this one statement. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, really, whether in business or relationships or work or whatever it is, we can know that we're, that we're obeying the commands of Jesus if um, what we're doing to others is what we would like them to do for us. Pretty simple. Number 20, choose the narrow way. Jesus says in Matthew 7, 13 and 14, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. So we, we see throughout scriptures that um, Jesus is referred to as the way, the way, the truth, and the life. He's referred to as the gate. Uh, the gate I'm sorry. Um, he's the sheep gate. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and really to boil it down, what Jesus is saying here is, um, choose me. If you want to be on the narrow road, if you want to enter through the narrow gate, because I am the way and I am the gate. So if you want to find that way that leads to life, choose me. Um, and for me, I remember the, this is, it's really the first time that I read this, it was kind of scary to think I'm a new Christian and I'm reading this and I'm thinking, Basically, what this is saying is that most people aren't going to find this way. And I have to believe that if Jesus is saying these things, that he's telling the truth. And so it's heartbreaking uh, to me to think that a majority of cre 
creation of the of the people in the history of humanity are not going to find the way that it's broad that they're going to enter into destruction and that few are going to find it and so you know a it makes me have so much gratitude that jesus has uh, drawn my heart but b it really compels um, me to want to share the good news of the gospel with whoever and so that's my hope for all of us as well um, the last command today is beware of false prophets And really the point of this one primarily is that not everyone who says that they're from God is from God. Um, so many people use religion and literally the name of God, whether they're claiming to be God or from God, for self-gain, um, to manipulate people, um, and things like that. And, and they really just hurt so many people. And so many people turn away from God because they've been hurt by people claiming to be representing God. Um, I honestly think that some of these people who um, are, are doing these things are so deceived that they believe that they really are doing God's work. Um, <clears throat> but that's why it's so important for you to be in God's word yourself so that you can know whenever people are trying to lead you astray from the truth. Um, that's also why it's so important to be a part of the church that teaches truth, and really just to be a part of a church, obviously, that teaches truth, but in general. Um, because if we have others in our lives who love us and are trying to help us stay on the path, um, that when people come into our lives and, and try to deceive us, they're going to be there to help guide us um, back onto the right path, basically. So that's all I got for you guys this week. Um, it's raining outside. Last week it was snowing whenever I was doing this. Um, <clears throat> anyway, review real quick of this week. The commands of Jesus 15 through 21. Seek first the kingdom. Judge not. Do not throw your pearls before swine. Ask, seek, knock. Do unto others. Choose the narrow way. Beware of false prophets. So I hope these are a blessing to you all, and I hope that God will help you to put these into action in your life. And uh, until next week, have a blessed week. Thanks.